الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يعمل من الصالحات وهو مؤمن فلا كفران لسعيه وإنا له كاتبون وقال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ونبينا محمد وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned in a hadith when he mentioned the virtues of Ramadan and he was talking about Ramadan he said that in the last night of Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all the sins And he gives a lot of reward to all the people of Iman. So Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'in asked, Ahiya Laylatul Qadr? Is it because it's Laylatul Qadr? And then they get all of that in Laylatul Qadr? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No. وَلَكِنَّ الْعَامِلْ إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّى أَجْرُهُ إِذَا قَضَى عَمَلُهُ You pay the worker when he finishes his work. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us last night of Ramadan which in many ahadith indicates to be that the night of Eid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is night of Eid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives people special gifts during that night. This is why in some of the hadith it's known as Laylatul Ja'izah, the night of gifts. That the people of Iman receive their gifts from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala on this night. That you all have fasted, you did my ibadah during the month of Ramadan. Tonight I will give you my gift. So we get the gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore the next day we perform Salatul Eid. Celebration is not the celebration of the end of Ramadan, celebration of receiving the gifts of Ramadan. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Last night gave us all a lot of gifts. I'm so happy to receive this gift. You know what Eid, after Salatul Eid. Children are more happy when they receive the gifts than they perform Salatul Eid. So those gifts are very important. So we all receive our gifts from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what I mentioned many times that our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really a life. You think in a family situation where the father brings gifts for his children. We see Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that she did so much ibadah for my sake, for my pleasure. So it's not that I'm rewarding you for your ibadah, for your fast, for your salah, for your Qur'an. 
I also give you special gifts because you made me happy. So subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very happy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is happy with his servants, he wants to give his servants gifts. So this night that is coming is very night, very important night. We don't want to lose this night in just making preparations for Eid and just trying to look at our clothing and uh, uh, gifts and this and that, planning. This night is very important. At the time when Malaika come with gifts, if a person is performing salah, if the person is doing the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will really enjoy that gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is that special enjoyment of the gift? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith. Man qama laylatay al A person who would do ibadah in the two nights of Eid. The night of Eid al-Adha and night of Eid al-Fitr. لم يمت قلبه يوم تموت القلوب. The time when everyone's heart would die, this person's heart would not die. Which means at the time when people are in ghafla, in dunya, and things are keeping them away from remembering Allah, this person's heart will not die. The special gift this person received from Eid was he could be in the mall. And he says, La ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. This was a special gift he got from Eid. That at a place where everyone's heart is dying, his heart is still alive. His heart is not dead. This person's heart never dies. This person is out on a trip and they're enjoying it. They're having a lot of fun, good time. And he remembers, oh, I have to recite my juz, I have to finish my juz. I have to finish my tasbihat. I have to do my salah. Everyone goes to rest, he said, I'll let me quickly do four rakah salah and then I will go to rest. His heart doesn't die. What a great gift. Subhanallah. That this gift is not a normal gift. It's really a great gift if we can appreciate the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is in this dunya. This person could be in a large gathering of people. Huge gathering of people. Where? At a situation where that, just, that gathering makes you forget everything this person's heart will still be alive. You are in the mall, in the shopping center, you are in the park, wherever the person is, his heart doesn't die. So this is through the ibadah of the night of Eid. The second place where the heart will die is in the qabr. When we die, of course, physically the heart would die, but even spiritually, many people's heart dies. That they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God forbid when the adab comes, when the hardship comes. There are a lot of people that at a time of hardship, they turn away from deen. At a, at a time of hardship, they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hardship came. This person feels this hardship came because I had a beard. So let me shave my beard, the hardship will go away. I lost my job because of my beard. This hardship came because of my imama. So okay, let me take it off. This hardship came because I was doing salah. So let me stay away from doing salah. At the airport, hardship came, he missed the flight because he was doing salah that didn't allow him to board the plane. Now he may not pray again. At a time of hardship, sometimes people give away. But Ayaz of Allah, they turn away from deen. So, at the time of hardship in the qabr, a person, if he, use, if he is used to turning away from deen at the time of hardship, his heart would die at that time too. His heart would be dead and he won't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
he would think of everything else to protect himself, but he won't remember calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ibadah of the night of Eid is a very important gift. That's the time when we receive our gift. Of course, if we can't do the ibadah all night, at least something during that night. Because generally what happens is, a person did ibadah throughout Ramadan, but that night we give it up. So we don't want to give up that night. And mainly, generally what happens is during that night, especially for women, that night it's all about dresses, jewelry, makeup, and gifts, and wrapping the gifts, and before they know it is the time for Fajr. Oh, I didn't sleep the whole night. What were you doing? And then you just see what the person was doing. So, that is a special night of Ibadah. This coming night, if it is the last night of Ramadan, then this could be Laylatul Qadr. And if it is not the last night of if it, uh, if it is not the last night of Ramadan, it's the night of Eid, then it's the special night of Laylatul Jaiz, it's the night of gifts. So it's one of the two. And we don't want to lose that very important night. This is one thing. Number two, the second thing that I wanted to remind. When the month of, month of Ramadan is over, generally, we feel that now I need some rest. Sure, we all need some rest. But our rest means we will go for shopping, we will go for outing, we will do everything. But when it comes to Nawafil, I need a little rest now. So rest simply means I did too much ibadah that I need to stop ibadah for some days now. This is what our rest means. This person will still be checking his emails, internet, news, but he needs some rest so he won't recite, recite Quran. We don't want to take that rest for sure. Shaitan's first attack, you know, remember, if moon is out, if we see the Hilal, if we see the first moon, means Iblis is out. All the shayateen are out. And they want to try their best to get their revenge from us. 30 days they were locked up because of me and you. They were locked up because of us for 30 days. Shayateen get locked up in Ramadan. As soon as they come out, they would try to take their revenge from us. And generally, they do it very successfully just at the time of Eid. Salatul Eid. And you see what happens right after Salatul Eid. You walk out of the masjid and men and women together, no scarf, and everyone wants to show the makeup, the dress, and no hijab, and nothing. And the whole Ramadan is gone. Shaitan is happy, mashallah. He says, I pulled away the whole Ramadan from them. Just in one occasion, just after, we just finished Salatul Eid. Right after that, he pulled away everything. Now, after Eid, if you go to our homes and you see what happens in the houses. Enjoyment of Eid, part of that enjoyment is a special movie. We'll watch a special Indian movie that night. So, that's it. Everything is gone. What do you think will be left after that movie from the reward of Ramadan? And from the effect of the ibadah of Ramadan? Everything is gone. So, remember, shaitan would do his best and they, all of them, they would do their best to attack us in whichever way possible. Okay, just check your email. And the person is checking email. Oh, there is a link to something else there in my email. Let me just check it out. And the person goes from one place to another place, to third place. Oh, it's only, you know, I'm, I'm looking at different ads. I'm looking at the, to buy something. There's a pictures of women. Astaghfirullah. I don't want to see it. But there, there it's, it's printed in the house now, in the heart. Photocopy in the heart. So, Shayateen would do their best to attack us as soon as Ramadan is over. We want to 
be very strong after Ramadan not to allow the shayateen to take away the effect of Ramadan, the reward of Ramadan, and the connection that we have in Ramadan, they don't break it off. We want to work very hard on that. As I said, rest, mashallah, rest. Tell your family I need rest, so which means I can't go to the store. I can't go for shopping. But if I can go for shopping, then I can do the eight rakat hajj too. And if you don't go for shopping, then just do four rakats. In hajj, a lot of time, every year in hajj, people come with, to me with this question. That, do women have to go for jamarat to stone the shaitans? Because there's too much crowd over there. Someone says my mother is sick, someone says my wife, she can't walk. I generally just give them one answer. If she goes for shopping, she can go, she has to go for jamarat. And believe me, people even on wheelchair, they go for shopping. No exception. We came to Makkah. I'm not going to even buy some jewelry for myself. Kaaba is too tired over there. Jamarat, I'm going to go there. Shaitan said, don't come to me. Don't beat me up, you're my friend. So send someone else, okay. But I'm happy with you that you didn't come. <laughs> they can go back to their home and say, I didn't go and beat up Shri Shaitan. I stayed back home in the tent. Generally, really, I tell them this. And this became such a criteria that if you tell someone this, that means they have to go. So Shaitan, Shayateen are going to try their best. We want to protect ourselves from the effect of shayateen. And for that, before we leave, we should make a schedule. I want to do these things. Now, of course, the amount will vary. And it's going to be different. We were do, reciting Quran during Ramadan. Okay, in Ramadan you recited three Jews, five Jews, ten Jews, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the to recite. Now, every day I want to recite one juice, for example. But these days I'm going to be a little resting a little and taking some time off. So, okay, I'll recite three pages for one week. After that, I will go increase it back to half a juice and one juice. But don't give it up. If you give it up, that's it. Got it. Shaitan got the control over it. We don't want to give any of these ibadahs up. Reduce the amount, of course. The whole year won't be like Ramadan. We won't be able to do 20 rakahs every night. But at least, if not 8 rakahs, then 4 rakahs. <coughs> it doesn't have to be that one full juice in the 4 rakahs. Some amount of a little bit, few surahs, that's fine. But don't give it up. We were doing 20 rakahs every day, and you would see what happens. We all know it. We would see it. And after one week, if we get together, ask each other, what happened? Those of us, subhanAllah, all of us, 20 rakahs every night, Ramadan is over, even two rakahs are difficult. I have to use the bathroom. I don't have wudu, so I'm going to do it later. That's it. It's gone. Get up and do it. Don't give shaitan the chance to take you away from it. And we know our situation. Just in the first days, you give it up, never come back to it. These days, we have to be extremely strong on our ibadahs. Tasbihat. You were doing a lot of tasbihat in Ramadan. Don't give them up. Do it 100 times. It's difficult, do it 50 times. But don't give it up. So this is very important for all of us. All the ibadahs that, we're doing, that we were doing during the month of Ramadan, we want to continue with these ibadahs. You don't want to stop doing these ibadahs after Ramadan is over. And generally, as I said, shaitan's attack is that, mashallah, you are so great. You did so good. He doesn't say that you're a bad person. You are so good, mashallah. You did so much ibadah. Now you need some break. You're tired. And inshallah, make a good schedule. Starting next week, I will do three juz every day. That's it. You're gone right there. When you said study next week, that means it's gone. Not just next week. 
if it comes to your mind that tomorrow I will do it, that's gone. Don't let it for tomorrow. If you postpone the work for tomorrow, that tomorrow is not coming. Every day is today. Isn't it? Every day is today. So tomorrow, you will say, I will do it tomorrow because tomorrow never came. That's today. So every day is today. There is nothing tomorrow. Do whatever. If you do it today, you will do it tomorrow. Otherwise, you won't do it. So, we want to make sure that we don't give up our a'mal that we started during the month of Ramadan. Don't even postpone your a'mal. Don't wait that I'll do it after one week or after do it, I'll do it after one day. And if we find ourselves in that position, then we really have to push ourselves very hard. It's a fact. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us in the hadith, and this is a reality of our life. Shayateen are there and they are going to put their full force to take, take us away. Shayateen are not happy to see us in this ibadah. So, this is number two, the second thing that we want to do. Number three, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us to fast during the month of Ramadan. Now, generally our situation with fasting, we are very weak in fasting. Very generally, this is our situation. So, inshallah, we should all plan to keep at least some fast every month. The best will be three days of every month, 13th, 14th, and 15th of every month, we should try to fast. If not those days, any three days. But when we fix something, then when you make a schedule, then it's easier to follow. So if we just follow it, that okay, three days of every month, 13th, 14th, and 15th of every month, I will be fasting, then inshallah, we will be punctual. We will be able to keep up with it. Otherwise, okay, I will fast three days every month. And now, at the beginning of the month, in the middle, I will fast in the middle of the month. Middle of the month, okay, I'll do it at the end of the month. And then, before you know it, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, the month have ended and it's only one day left. Okay, I missed in three days. So it's, again, shaitan make us missing. So it's having a schedule and routine is always good and is very helpful. And if we make a routine, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us. In the family, we make a routine. Everyone in the family is doing it. It becomes a great help. And subhanallah, imagine a family who after Ramadan, everyone in the family, husband and wife, both, they do tahajjud, they both recite Quran, they both do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they both make dua, and then they both fast every month, few days of every month. Now imagine next Ramadan, how much more they will improve and they benefit from the ibadah. This was the effect of last Ramadan. Next Ramadan, they benefit even more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always keep them closer and closer and bring them closer to Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to do these a'mal and keep always connected to these a'mal. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve all the reward that we have earned during Ramadan until we face Him and we meet Him subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. Protect us from losing these a'mal. And one is losing it through sins, committing the sin here and there. Worse than that, worse than that is when you start giving it out to people. You give out, give it out to people. Someone won, he got salary, he worked. At the end of the month, he got his salary and he started giving it away to people. And would be even worse that you see someone that's your enemy. A person who's, who really doesn't like you and you give him the whole thing. And that really is what we normally do. Fasted in Ramadan, perform taraweeh, tahajjud, Quran. And then after Ramadan we are backbiting people. Here that person takes the reward of fasting, of salah, of Quran. So we don't want to backbite people. We don't want to talk against people. We don't want to have anything bad against people. Because through that we are just giving away our reward. As someone said to Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah once, that I heard someone told me that you backbite me. So he says to him, I don't love you so much. The person came and he said, I know. This is why I said you backbite me. He said, I told you, I don't love you so much. Then he said to him, if I was to backbite anyone, I would backbite my own father. 
Because if I am to give my reward to anyone, I'll give it to my father. So why should I backbite you and give you my reward of my ibadah? I'm not going to do that. Someone told her, Hassan al-Bisr, rahmatullahi alayhi, that there is a person who backs, backbites you. And imagine when someone comes and tells us that that brother or that sister was saying this against you. What would be our feeling? Okay, next time they come to me, I'll show them. Or when I get the chance, I'm going to take my revenge. Someone told Hassan al-Bisr, rahmatullahi alayhi, that there is a person who backbites you. So he prepared a dish of sweet dates and nice sweets and everything. And he sent it as a gift to that person. After some days, he sent another one. So that person was surprised. Why is he sending me gifts? So he came to him. He came to visit him. He felt good that, okay, he's sending me gifts. So he came to visit him. So he said, you know, I've, I'm so grateful to you that you sent me this gift. He said, no, I'm even more grateful to you that you sent me better gifts. And he's thinking, I never sent him anything. <laughs> so he said, no, I don't think I sent you anything. He said, yeah, you sent me the reward. I sent you only sweet. You beg me, me, you talk against me, you send me your reward of salah. And I'm only sending you some sweet and gifts. So the one that you're giving me is better than what I'm giving you. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to lose our reward of the ibadah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve the reward of our ibadahs. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to always increase our ibadah, be connected with these ibadahs for the rest of our life until we... Go and meet Rabbi Al-Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Akhul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa lisa'il al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat. Wa akhul da'wana alhamdulillahi wa ta'ala.